Hello, welcome to this little tutorial from Click Team Fusion 2.5. My name is Danny J. I'm from the Click Fusion Academy and I also am a part of Click Team as well. Uh, I thought I would show you how you could set up uh, a little scenario where you have a bullet capacity. Now, uh, I know that uh, people who are new to Click Team Fusion 2.5 may be wondering how this is working. I do see it crop up quite a lot on the forums uh, and on other sources, um, Reddit and such, such things like that. So basically what we have is we have a tank here uh, so this is going to be our uh, player this tank so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uncheck a few of these properties that we don't really need uh, and then I'm just going to give it a quick movement uh, we could give it something like the race car movement um, here we go we can quickly test this movement to see how it works as you can see there's no rotation on the object yet that's because we have uh, the direction uh, only one direction specified which is fine what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to turn this first of all it's going to make sure the hotspot and the action point are in the places where I want them so we don't have to generate uh, all the icon uh, all the directions for this tank um, because you can get fusion to do it on the fly just by going over to the runtime properties here um, and selecting automatic rotations so now you can see we have full rotation of our tank object. All right, so let's say you've got a little counter um, and you want the user to have some ammunition. Let's go with that. I'm just gonna resize this slightly so it's a little bit bigger. Obviously you can make it a little, little, little bit more pretty in your game. So our counter is at zero. Uh, let's give it an initial starting uh, amount of ammo. So the initial value, let's say it's got five bullets. Let's set minimum to zero, maximum we can leave as it is. Um, so you can see it starts off with five. So we're going to get it so our user can shoot. Every time he shoots, he's going to subtract one from his ammo count. And then when he runs out of ammo, he won't be able to shoot. Uh, so let's just set up the events for uh, the shoot. So I'm just going to do a group of events. I'm going to do shoot bullets. Um, right, okay, so here we go. So this is where you would stipulate your first event where you could shoot the bullet. So what you do is you choose um, which condition you want um, to be the... Um, one where you shoot the bullet. So I could do, when we press spacebar, we're going to shoot the bullet. So we can do create object, we can select bullet, and then we can choose our tank. So we're going to shoot it from the tank, but we're going to click on options and shoot it from the action point. Now the action point is where I've specified the action point is inside the, uh, when I edit the image, which is around here, just gives it a little bit of a, so if I do this, we can see I'm creating bullets every time I press spacebar. Now, they're not moving, so let's give them a bit of a movement. This is just for the demonstration. So for this instance, I'm going to give it the bouncing ball movement. I'm just going to slow it down a touch. I'll try it again. As you can see, it goes off in random directions, but it is coming from the turret, which is where we want it to go. So once we've created our bullet, in the same event, we can give our bullet some uh, parameters. We can say um, direction select direction and rather than choosing a direction because we don't know which direction our tank is facing we can get the direction of the tank so we can now do uh, animation get current direction value so now no matter which way I'm facing the bullet is going to shoot out in the direction we are facing now as you can see there's no automatic rotation of, uh, made for that so we can simply select the bullet and choose automatic rotations down here but you'll notice it's still not giving us the best of directions and that's because we have one direction set up which is right yet our animation is pointing up so I just need to flick that around so it is facing right there we go just uh, make sure that the hotspot is set to the center or even the left hand side because it's coming out of the turret but it's entirely your call and now when we give this a shot you'll notice that it comes out in the direction that is facing where the tank is facing or the turret is facing all right so you'll notice that when we do take some shots it's not subtracting anything from our ammo counter and that's because we need to tell it so we do upon pressing spacebar we're going to create the bullet and then we're going to simply subtract one from the counter now if you run the game now every time we shoot a bullet you can see the bullet gets created and it's uh, subtracting one from our ammo count. The only problem is when it gets to zero, the user can still 
shoot bullets, which is not correct. So we need to add another condition to this event. So we're saying upon pressing spacebar, add a new condition, and then what we do is we compare the counter to a value, and we say, is it greater than zero? If it is, then we can create a bullet and set the directions up. Run it again now. shoot five bullets and then we press spacebar we can't shoot any more now until we get some more ammo to boost that counter back up so now what we can simply do is insert an object just going to insert a random little ammo object here let's paint this in so we're going to pretend that this is ammo dot a few of these about. I'm holding down control here so I can uh, I can create more of the same objects. These are not different objects, they're all the same object, just different instances. And then we can create an event for this. We can create a new group called ammo and I'm just going to simply do collisions so the tank overlaps an ammo object. We're going to say add to counter five and then destroy the ammo object because we no longer need it. So now when I run around the frame, as you can see when I collide with this, it's going to destroy it and add five to the ammo count. So now what this means is that we can create the bullets and you can see when we run out of ammo, we can no longer until we collect some more and then we can run out again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is simply how you can limit uh, things like that with Fusion 2.5. You can see how easy it's done simply in two events not really in two events, technically only in one event. The second event is just so the user can collect some more ammo. Uh, but you can see how in just one event you can limit restrictions or you can put restrictions on certain events from firing. So basically the only time that uh, the user is going to be able to fire um, is when the ammo counter is greater than zero. Uh, and that's how you do it in Clitzy Infusion 2.5.